United, Bottle, this is Old Trafford and Allison gift City the league. Before we start this video, I do want to say that recently, especially my United videos, I have been referring to Manchester United as Man U, and I was literally just saying this as like a shortened version of their name. I have no clue what the history is behind this, and someone on my video, I think Sumrav Kumar was his name, commented, searched up the history behind it, and found out that it's tragic. What the fans sung about Busby Babes, what they said, um, opposition fans, was ridiculous, disgusting, and I couldn't believe the meaning behind the phrase. Um, and I'm sure a lot of young people, especially, who don't really know about the history behind it and stuff, do sometimes refer to Man United as Man U. And I won't be saying this again because it's absolutely terrible the way some fans use it. And it was the uh, anniversary of the Busby Babes on Saturday, so rest in peace to all of them. So, the start of the game, the first 15 minutes, I thought Everton played really well. They were stopping Luke Shaw and wan coming forward. Um, they had a good spell, 15 minutes. They didn't really do much, couldn't create the chances. But then, United... Out, not, not out of nowhere, they had the possession. Rashford with a great cross to Cavani. Heads it home. What a header. Number nine's finish. Great goal. And uh, they go 1-0 up. And that's what, you know, United, they weren't playing their best, but they got the goal. And then Bruno, a few minutes afterwards, gets the ball, looks up, sees the goalkeeper off his line. Bang. Top left. What a goal. I know some people are saying the goalie was um, a bit... She could have done better, but I think that's just a brilliant finish. He could be a bit taller, maybe, but I mean, who can we can't control our right, can we? United going at half time, 2 0 up. You're thinking this is another man United win. This is what they're doing all the time. They're gonna just keep up with City, you know, uh, go top of the table. But then within about five or six minutes, Everton equalise. It's the first goal is Calvert Lewin. Maguire gets done for pace by Calvert-Lewin, hits it at the higher, the higher parries it into Decore, and Decore simple tap in, two defensive errors there, Maguire not fast enough, and David De Gea, poor uh, keep in there, and then the second goal, uh, Rodri Hamas Rodriguez is just in the middle of the box, no one's marking him, takes a touch, bangs him into the bottom right, nothing United could do there, and they are 2-2, two -two. and then you're thinking, ooh, next goal's going to be crucial, they get a set piece. Luke Shaw with another assist. Great cross. McTominay, I think it comes off his shoulder. And then the keeper goes to dive, slips. And then um, it goes in, bottom right. And you're thinking, this is another United masterclass. They've came back. They've overcome the uh, Everton onslaught. And uh, it's going to be another win. Until you yeah, get a late free kick to Ansabi fouls him. And he has received racial abuse for this, which is... Completely unacceptable. What are you doing? If this is United fans, you're not really a United fan for doing that. But anyway, they get a free kick. Uh, Olsen's up. They're all up the keeper. It gets whipped in. The the uh, United defence are like here. The players are like there. So they're playing them all off. Bloody slab it. Decides to go. Just take a step backwards. Plays Calvert-Lewin onside. Calvert-Lewin takes a touch. De Gea comes out not fully committed, not fully confident. And Calvert-Lewin taps home to equalise. In the final minute, uh, Duncan Ferguson going crazy. And Charlie's like, oh, no, I'm going to get some wine afterwards. Please do not hug me. And uh, United bottle it. And now I think they, after the next game I'm going to talk about, they are a long way off City. But that's the thing with United. Their attack is really good. They've scored the most goals in the league. And it's just their defence. They need a good defence. In every title-winning team, there's a good defence. You look at Van Dijk company, Diaz probably this season, if they, and all the other defenders have to be solid, and I think, although I said that United have had the moments to do it, like the comebacks and the last minute winners, the one thing they don't have is defence, and if City's run that they've put together is just immense, and I don't think United will be able to match that, they'll drop more silly points, and as I've said in the last United video, that they will still just be in that top four contention with Liverpool at the moment, Leicester, and... Um, Chelsea maybe uh, and all them lot, but yeah, it weren't a. It was a good performance by the attack. There's two sides to it. Good performance by the attack by United, really poor by the defense. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he did all right. Maguire and De Gea though, the villains, the ones who gifted the chances. More Maguire than De Gea, I'd say, because that third goal was all his fault. Captain of the club, and you go, yep, I'm gonna step back and say, oh, he's offside, ref. No, mate, you've played him onside. Right, so now we're going to go on to Anfield, Liverpool 1, Man City 4. 
I could not believe it. Pep Guardiola, masterclass. And I feel like a right mug now because the last time I talked about Liverpool against Spurs, I go, oh, Liverpool are going to win the league, Liverpool are going to win the league. Well, look at now, things have changed. They deserved it, they fully deserved it. In the first half, I thought it was even, really. City had the possession, Liverpool had the possession. The only clear-cut chance was that Gundogan penalty. And now he joins Mares and De Bruyne missing penalties against Liverpool in crucial moments, absolutely skies it, and Liverpool kind of get away with one, but during that, like, from 40 to 45, I thought Liverpool had, they looked more threatening than City, and City just stepped back a bit and looked a bit offish, and if Liverpool were at their best, they would have punished City, but they didn't, half-time, nil-nil, Klopp would have been a bit happy because they um, bottled the penalty, but then they come out, City, wonderful, I think within 5-10 minutes, Gundogan scores, Trent, got turned inside out by Alexander Arnold, uh, by Sterling. Trent got turned out by himself. Yeah, what's he doing? So yeah, he gets turned inside out. Fabinho doesn't make a challenge. Sterling's allowed to shoot. Great save by Alisson and Gundogan just taps home. I thought, realistically, it's from Trent. He gets done too easy. The best game I saw him play defensively was against Spurs, but he didn't really have that one man running at him. And if you look, United, that when Rashford was playing in the FA Cup, targeted uh, Trent. Every team just targets Trent because he's, Defending is very, very um, dodgy, and he needs to move into midfield soon because if he keeps doing that, he's going to cost Liverpool points, especially this season. But it's 1 0, and you know, I'm thinking here that City are in control. Liverpool have a bit of a spell with um, attack, and um, you're like, mm, could anything happen? I was like, nah. There was solid Man City, was Diaz. Stones, who's been amazing ever since he's made a few mistakes, he's come in with that partnership. Zinchenko, Jao Cancelo, they were all amazing. They withheld the pressure. But then, Diaz, with I think his first mistake of the season, um, lets Salah go, tugs on his arm a bit. Salah, of course, does the little dive. That he, not, not a dive, he won't dive. He over-exaggerates it because, obviously, Jack Grealish does that a lot. Every player does it. Harry Kane went down with minimal contact, but it was a penalty, soft penalty. He puts it away, brilliant penalty, and Liverpool are back in the game undeservedly, in my opinion. They didn't really offer a threat. And then um, you're thinking, oh, Liverpool could do something here, you know. Uh, they've got Mane Mane and the Egyptian King and all that. Bobby Firmino, the cop end. Alisson, no Virgil, but you think it's at Anfield. They might do something here. They need to do something to stay in the total race. Alisson, with his feet, Jamie Carragher has a mental breakdown and um, gives, gives it away. Fabinho tries to clear it. It's an absolute mess. Gives back to Alisson. Alisson, right to Foden, I think it was. And then he crosses it in. Gundogan hits the bar and goes in. And it's from an Alisson error. And you're like, um, I, I didn't see Liverpool getting away back into it. I was like, there's no way now that they are going to win this. And they needed to win this to stay in the title race. Then Alisson does it again. Like, he's, I'd say he's probably the second best keeper in the world, if not the best. Gives it away again to uh, Bernardo Silva, I think it is, who dinks it over, Sterling. Sterling scores against his old club. Liverpool fans will be fuming with that, and that's two Alisson errors, which basically gifted the game to City then. Liverpool weren't going to come back. But even the, even the Liverpool players, they showed no fight. They didn't look like, we're going to get back into this after the 2-1. And yes, Alisson has, has his mistakes, but this is the first time I've ever saw Alisson have two massive major errors. And then the fourth goal is just amazing. Phil Foden, what a wonder kid he is. Absolutely amazing. Takes the ball. The, the quickness of him t uh, cutting in, then hitting it. They've got no chance. The pace on that is amazing. Phil Foden, amazing. And I think you've got, if you're a Liverpool fan, you've got to give Alisson the leeway. Like uh, for Villa, I saw him Martinez make mistakes against West Ham. He's kept us in so many games before. And I think Alisson's done that for Liverpool. So you do have to give him a break. No one should be abusing him or anything like United fans do. And as much as I have questioned Pep and questioned his um, abilities, he's eventually got it right with Ruben Diaz. I think, you know, they're used to playing with no crowds, aren't they? All their plastic supporters being a bit quiet. So they've got used to it. They'll win this league now. I can't see anything happening now. But really, Pep has done really well to um, change from their start of their season where they had a real dodgy start to now being possibly uh, eight points ahead of United if they win their game in hand against Everton, I think they'll play their game in hand. So, yeah, it was a pet masterclass, really. And as much as I don't like City in terms of their history and the way they've done it, I've got to give them respect. And now I can't see them losing it. They, they might lose a few games. It's just how many points can they win it by and how many what will the points gap be? Because uh, Liverpool are out of it, let's be honest, and United don't have 
the defence and the uh, consistency to beat City. I think if they win one more, they've broke the record for the longest winning streak, or they've equaled it, I can't remember. But Pep, amazing. Um, Phil Foden, great. Um, and that system that he's playing now with no striker, it's really good how Mares, Bernardo Silva, Gundogan can get involved. They all rotate. And it's just a headache for the defence of the opposition. And you've got to give credit to... I know Liverpool have got a load of injuries and it has hindered their season, but he's doing it without KDB and Aguero. They're two main men. It, something must be wrong with KDB because they've won the league. Well, I'm say this season they win the league. And they won the league a few seasons ago when KDB was injured as well. So yeah, there's some... Just give KDB to Villa, yeah? And yeah, I, I can only see one P person winning the league now unless City do a major bottle job, which I've never saw. So... Yeah, I think City have won the league. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.